How's it going and welcome back to the Marvel Snap deck highlight video here on YouTube. Today we're coming at you with a deck I've been calling Magneto Disruption. This is a deck that I would classify as a mid-range deck, which means it's just looking to play individually high quality cards that also have some disruptive elements to it. Namely, the mainstay here fills both of these things. This is a six cost 12 power card that on reveal, it moves all opposing three and four cost cards to this location. Being able to reposition things on the board is a very powerful effect in Snap. Getting to shuffle your opponent's board around in key spots is valuable. And if you deploy this to a location that's already full, it just gives you 12 power for six resources, which is a really good rate. Um, I'd previously been playing Chavez as the top end in my other mid-range decks, but with Wave being added to the game, there's actually a good bit of value in having a six drop that you can draw before the sixth turn because you can wave on three into Magneto on four, then only shuffle the board around, but also get a lot of power down very quickly. Other key cards in the deck as far as individually good cards go is Namor is fantastic for holding down a single location with plus five ongoing power at four. Uh, Vision is a card that I've enjoyed more the more I've played with it. It's really good at getting into spots like Nowhere or the Sanatorium, and it just makes your opponent kind of guess on that last turn where Vision could end up to predict what you're going to do to win the game. Um, as far as disruptive elements go, we've got things like Enchantress as well as Shang-Chi here for interacting with the opponent's board, as well as Armor, obviously, to lock out Nova Carnage. Uh, Hobgoblin is also another 5-drop I've really been enjoying uh, because it pairs well, especially with uh, Namor. Uh, Namor loses his bonus if you put anything else in his path, so Hobgoblin and Claw are both ways for us to kind of cheat extra power into Namor's path when our opponent won't be expecting us to since Namor typically wants to be all on his own. At any rate, I hope you enjoy the game highlights that I have for you today. I think they highlight this deck and its power pretty well. I'm definitely going to be working on more disruptive decks like this in the future, so I'd love to know in the comments down below what cards you like to play in this type of shell if you've been working on it as well. And remember to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy it. We put out a few deck highlights here a week. Enjoy! Here are not revealed till the game ends. Okay, that's kind of good with Maximus. Let's just get our three power seven drop down without the drawback of letting them draw cards until the very end. I'm gonna swap hands on the last turn. Go ahead and play armor mid, I think. Um, do we play mid? I guess they're if they're Nova Carnage, there is some incentive for them to like Nova Carnage into the dark dimension. I'm gonna do this. Maybe we'll try and do our best to be ahead here at the end. This is super cute with the negative zone. We're gonna go ahead and just Maximus left here, get the Dark Dimension set up real nice. Then I'm gonna go ahead and Agent 13 plus Wave this turn, I think. Let's just get a set up with Magneto for next turn. We're actually behind right now, which I think is a good thing for us because it means when this Magneto flips up, it's going to flip up second. So if they play out a three or four cost tier, it's going to get pulled into the negative zone, which I think bodes well for us overall. All enemy cards played this turn to this location. Okay. All right, so they have an Enchantress, but that doesn't really accomplish anything. We have an armor here. So I, I could Deathlock left for plus five. And then maybe we Moon Girl. I feel like I'm gonna be hard pressed to lose this Magneto path here with the, with the Enchantress especially. So I, think we, I think we do this and we snap them. I think we're, we're probably winning right. They already need to play mid to catch up here. They're most likely to catch up here, so we just want to stay ahead left. We're going to have 10, 18 power on the left. Oh, I guess I guess this is actually less than just Iron Manning, right? This is uh, 10, so this will be 20 left. All right, yeah, that's definitely better. Quick maths. Whoa, 
Shang Chi is a. Oh, I guess we knew that was coming too, technically. That's fine. We're gonna win the left and then win the win the breaker, right? Ha <laughs> ha! And they Nova Carnage. Remember, that's such a good shout out. This is something that happens quite frequently. They went on a Nova card into the Dark Dimension so they can play out everywhere else to get that blow up on the last turn, which is why we played that armor there. Great foresight and uh, four Qs rewarded. Missed up remembering that we gave them a Shang-Chi to destroy our, our Dorko here, but all's well that ends well, right? Hey, Tadric. Let's see what we got here. Solid opener for us, our one and a two drop. We can move things here on turn six, so no reason to play out there proactively. We'll drop Agent to the right, because there are some regions that you kind of get paid off for playing this out two on one, or playing this out too early. Um, usually Sunspot means the armor's static text is not gonna be relevant, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and, and hedge holding onto it for now, especially if we have Sentinel for a similar amount of power. Not gonna lock our hand or anything here. And look, cards can't be played here. So this is actually one of the reasons to play a card out proactively, especially when New York mitigates the potential downside later. Uh, well, just in case they're a, uh, a Nova Carnage deck, we'll just drop armor in the center here. This is a random card that we're probably not going to do anything with this game. Okay, so we get to each play out one card this turn. Oh, snap. They snapped me. Okay, that's probably probably okay for us. Start. Let's start here and see what they put in with their wave. They seem they seem pretty confident about their wave play here. It turns out their wave play was, in fact, excellent for them. I think with that happening, I go ahead and Magneto left, which lets me pull their wave over. So uh, we fill this up and Magneto can hopefully win this left spot. They can only play one card again this turn. Shang Chi. Oh, I Shang Chi doesn't work. <laughs> we drew we drew Shang Chi as well. Okay, so with that happening, they we know they have an infinite here. So the question is, where do I want to play? We're basic we're basically a coin flip, right? So will they will they infinite? I guess they could probably pull Odin left, and then Infinite center. Oh, you know what I can do? I can pull my armor out of here and then play... Oh, cards can't be played here on six. So Infinite has to go here. So we're just dead, right? Because they're adding plus 20 power here. Oh, wait, what if I do, what if I do this? This works, right? Because I have six and then plus five, so we beat the Odin because they can't play here. It's not a coin flip because of the vault. Yeah, sick, because we pull Hobgoblin out thanks to New York. Okay, yeah, this is a win. I should I should have snapped. I should have snapped. I missed the snap. I bet I bet they stay in if I if I snap there. I missed I missed four cubes. I was so excited to see the line. Sweet, sweet game. I'm glad there are a lot of permutations there. New York had so many decisions at the end of the game where you can slide things around, and then I missed the vault at first, but we ended up coming in clutch. This is absolutely one of my favorite cards. So powerful in endgame spots like that, putting power into locations you normally wouldn't be able to for a variety of reasons. Two, three, four, curving right and out the door. Ongoing effects are double tier. Okay, that could be an okay target for namor he says before it disappears one twos and threes cannot be played here that's actually still a kind of a decent spot for namor 
Notable here that on five, cards are gonna cost one more, which is actually a decent turn to save Namor for now, potentially. Lead on Sentinel, so we don't have to commit our armor to anywhere. Rocket Raccoon getting a good call out there and getting its plus attack. It's a little bit behind in the mid now. Play a card here, add a copy to another location. Huh. With this start, they could be on Nova Carnage stuff. I think I think I might just armor here, because if we armor and hit both of these, it's real good for us. They're just fully locked out of Nova Carnaging. Those two cards, you just slot into most anything, so I think you just hedge that they could your opponent could be doing at all times. Now this could end up flipping over to the Crimson Cosmos, so then Namor can't go anywhere, but I think that's fine for us. The 50%. Okay, so no Nova Carnage to worry about. This game is good. There's a Magneto. Well, I think with that in mind, we go ahead and just wave here in the middle because she's gonna set things to four and then they're gonna cost one more from the Dream Dimension. So I'll be able to play Magneto next turn, which is great. Plus 12 power and kind of slide things around for the opponents. Each be able to play one card this turn. Oh, snap. Hobgoblin's kind of a fun one, and our opponent snapped us. They can only play one card, so we know this hobgoblin's gonna get to gonna get to hit. I guess if they play here and the Hobgoblin generates here, I get kind of got in the middle, which I don't really need to let myself get got that way. So I think I think it's safer to just Magneto. Hobgoblin could backfire if they play here and we flip here. Gotta <laughs> yanked him, yanked him back and forth there. Feeling pretty okay about our spot here, honestly. So, I think we just vision, right? Vision here, and then it pops up over here, and then we're up here by by a good bit. Snap. We'll snap back. It might actually be wrong to snap here because they might stay in for four, but fold for eight. Whatever, whatever they play here happens twice as well, though, is noteworthy. Good, right? Yep. Close. Got the full eight. Not bad. You know, let's do it. Solid curve here. Only have one card here. It gets plus five power. Nice. This is a little bit of a gamble to play Agent 13 on one in an unknown location, but I think it's worth spending our resource in the early turn if we can. Namor is obviously getting reserved for Atlantis on the left here. He gets a bonus himself if he's your only card in the location, so plays very well with this. Devil Dino is actually not a terrible card in our deck, especially when we have Sentinel to power up our hand. So staple in the format gets plus two power for each card in your hand. And our deck generally only plays one card per turn. And when something those cards are Sentinel and Agent, our hand's staying relatively full. So it's gonna be a pretty thick lad this game, especially in the big house here. Looks like the way this is getting set up, unless something especially favorable flips up here, we're gonna be playing to win the big house and Atlantis. Lecter, okay. Okay, and Sentinel is uh, kind of a free roll there, so it just replaces itself immediately. I go ahead and just uh, Devil Dino mid. Against their deck, uh, this setup, they could very well be a Nova Carnage deck, so holding on to um, Wave later to be disruptive on one of their final turns is good. Yeah, because this is, this is Moon Girl, which is gonna double up their hand, basically. So this is getting bigger and uh, they're gonna be setting up for a big play here. So I think the play here is Namor left, 
And then next turn, we will wave to be disruptive into their sixth turn, potentially. They obviously aren't going to Nova Carnage Center, and they have armor on the right, so this is going to be the setup lane for this. So this might be a game, too, where if we draw armor next turn, perhaps we play armor out to the left, even though it turns off Namor and Atlantis. Oh, they nova on the right. Okay. But that means they do, li they do likely have another Nova in their hand here. So I think, I think I am going to go ahead and uh, wave on the right. And then the Sentinel here is kind of a free roll as well. They could, they could pull the trigger on Nova plus something to blow it up over here this turn, which would not be great for us. It's worth noting that the big house locks us out of playing Shang-Chi in the middle. All right, this is not Nova Carnage. Okay, and they didn't play out a Nova proactively. So that means that they are not going to be able to really do much next turn. They get, to, they get to make exactly one play. So do so do we, obviously. So we're, we're torched center. I think we're pretty well set up right. So the question is, how do we gear our sort up left? How do we win right? Uh, if we just deploy Vision, they can only play one card, right? So the most power is just Hobgoblin here and send that on over because they can only put one thing into play. I think, that, I think that does it. I guess they could Chavez left to tie there, but then we win the tiebreaker, right? Because they'll be negative three to nine, which means we're up 12 here and they're only up 10 in the center. Also, if they play Chavez out, this goes down too, so they'll be up eight in the center. A snap. I think we I think we win this under most conditions. They need like something weird like Hulk into Atlantis to beat us, I think. Oh, I guess they could devil dino us on the left, huh? Could maybe go bad for us. Okay, cool. Magneto is kind of a strange one. I'm kind of surprised. What? What happens if they Magneto us left here? If they Magneto us left, they pull Devil Dino and Wave over. And then... Would they have won? Devil Dino and Wave plus Namor. I'd lose the Atlantis bonus and his passive. So I'd have uh, 18 here. And they'd only have 17 here. So they actually still lose if they Magneto on the left. Good game either way. Magneto. Magneto is a really powerful card. The more I play with this card, the more I like it both with and against it seems very strong being able to rearrange your opponent's board hey thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video remember if you enjoyed this and you want to see more deck breakdowns here on youtube tap that like button make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything i'll see you back again here real soon hopefully